What I'm about to share with you is the life cycle of a white-tailed buck from literally birth through its death. This first photo of mine that I took many years ago shows a spiked whitetail. I took this photo in the Adirondacks of New York State. The snow depth was very deep, the winter was very cold, but if you look at this deer you would say that probably doesn't have any potential. He's a year and a half old, even though his body conformation is quite good, certainly his antlers are very poor. And uh, it kind of fits the mold of what you hear when people say, once a spike, always a spike. When you look at an animal like that, you really don't think he's got a lot of potential. But I found over the years that what, you, what a yearling has when he's uh, a year and a half old for antlers is not indicative of what can happen when he reaches maturity. What is maturity? Uh, how do we know that that buck is mature? Well, first of all, from a physiological standpoint, Bucks do not reach uh, skeletal maturity until they're roughly three and a half years of age. From a muscle standpoint, they don't reach maturity until they're about four and a half to five and a half. Up until that point, a lot of the nutrients that they consume are going towards skeletal growth, muscle growth, just overall body growth. When they do hit that maturity point, then the partitioning of nutrients can switch more towards antler growth. So if we're trying to decide where is maturity? Where do we know that the optimal amount of nutrients can go to antler growth? It has to at least be at the point where they've already reached skeletal maturity and muscle maturity. Now between age one and age two, his body mass started to grow. He was putting on bones, he was putting on muscles. And when that buck hits two years of age, he's kind of equivalent to a 14 year old teenager. As you see here, he's an eight point, two and a half year old. He's still not the same potential as what you might far, find in big farm country, but remember, he is uh, living in the Adirondacks. It's uh, hard to make a living up there. So even though he's behind the curve as far as antler growth, uh, he's still got a long ways to go to see what his potential is. And so at age two, he happened to score about 85 Boone and Crockett. Then when he hit age three, he started to really show some potential. He went from 85 Boone and Crockett to 122 as a three and a half year old. But even at three, he was still less than what you would expect for a three and a half year old buck. But again, remember, he's living in the Adirondacks of New York. The elevation there is about 3,500 feet above sea level. Again, cold winters, lots of snows, marginal foods. There's no agriculture there at all. Now the interesting thing about this deer was that I own and operate a white-tailed deer research facility in western New York. We got the necessary permits from the state of New York. We tranquilized this deer. We transported him about 240 miles from the Adirondacks to uh, our farm in the western part of the state. And for the next year, this buck had literally everything known to man that he uh, could need from a food standpoint. We have 13 food plots inside the enclosure. Uh, we've got mass producing uh, acorn trees. We've got an apple orchard. We supplementally feed our deer twice, or twice a day and so they've got great, great nutrition. And so we went from having this buck be a 122 Boone and Crockett three-year-old to the next photo, which you will see he was 164 Boone and Crockett. And that was an incredible jump for one year. As a matter of fact, in this animal, it was the greatest antler growth of his entire life. And so food pretty much did that. Habitat did that. Uh, better soils did that. So. Even though he was a spike buck as a yearling, he had the genetics for great antlers. And when he turned four, he had great antlers. Then when he hit age five, uh, his antlers grew just a little bit more. Not great, he was now 165 as a five-year-old. He's fully mature. He's starting to put on some real body mass when it comes to uh, uh, his muscles. Uh, at age five, this animal would be equivalent to about a 30-year-old man. And so he's literally a rutting machine, but he's, uh, he's, got a lot of, uh, he's got a lot of potential and he still has a lot of age left in him, but he has yet to reach his maximum antler growth. When he hit age six is when he peaked from an antler standpoint. Again, remember, he was a spike buck as a yearling. And at age six, he had everything that a whitetail hunter uh, dreams about. He scored 169 Boone and Crockett. And 
Tremendous body mass. He's got tremendous antlers. Those tines are nearly a foot long. And so he really had it all. But it took six years for him to get there. And so as you can see, he peaked at six. Now at age seven, his antlers were nearly the same size. Matter of fact, it dropped about three inches. He's 166 Boone and Crockett as a seven-year-old. So he's still a great, great animal. His body is still tremendous. He's got lots of uh, uh, muscle structure. Uh, he certainly had an attitude. He was uh, now he's equivalent to a 40-year-old a man, but he's certainly got everything that a whitetail hunter would uh, cherish to hunt. Now once he hit age eight, this buck uh, started to change. He did not have the sculpted body that you would expect of a younger four and a half or five and a half year old. It still looked really good, but he was starting to lose some things. His uh, antler growth dropped from 166 as a seven year old to 160 as an eight year old. And he started to have uh, you know, a few stickers and kickers here on, the, on his rack. His attitude actually started to change about this age. And so he's putting on age, He's still an incredible specimen, but his antlers are starting to go the other way now. At age nine, he scored 160 Boone and Crockett, so it's the same size antlers as he had at age eight. Uh, he was actually a clean 10-point rack at that age. Uh, his body still looked great. He still was involved in the rutting mix. Uh, he had a great, uh, again, a great body. He had everything going for him. Uh, didn't show a lot of decline, but you could tell if you were around him for all of those years that he was not what he was when he was a six-year-old buck. So he had started to go the other way, even though to the average person's eye, it would not look that way. When he hit age 10, you could see that some things were happening. I mean, this is an old man, so to speak, is certainly in a whitetail world. His antlers dropped to 156 Boone and Crockett. He was not a five by five or a four by five anymore with real long tines. His rack was still quite heavy at age 10, but he's now a buck that scores 156. Also, his neck was not as full in the rut, nor was his front shoulders. So his testosterone level had started to drop. And it was pretty impressive to see the fact that uh, he didn't quite have the same giddy up that he had when he was a younger buck even though he was still involved in the whole rutting mix. So he'd started to have a rapid decline at this point. At age 11, he really looked like an old man. Uh, still had heavy antlers. His antler beams were nowhere near as long as they had been in previous years, certainly not what they were at age six. His antlers at age 11 were 143 Boone and Crockett. He was basically a four by four mainframe with some stickers. Uh, he no longer aggressively was involved in the rutting experience. And uh, you could really tell his age by looking at the size of his neck. You could tell it by the size of his front shoulders uh, during the month of November. He just didn't have it anymore. And his attitude was that uh, he was going to be a little bit involved in the rut, but it was nowhere as near what it was before. And so he would really started to decline at age 11. Something very interesting happened in the spring of his 12th year. We noticed that he started to drop body weight. And then as he started to grow his antlers in late March and early May, when he was 12 years old, uh, there was something drastically wrong with his uh, physical well-being. Again, started to drop body weight. His antlers did not progress during the summer months, That certainly not the way that we had seen it happen before. And so as he kind of inched into autumn, he was very thin. And then by the time late November rolled around, uh, he only carried antlers that were 105 Boone and Crockett, so very small, uh, typical of what you might see in a two and a half year old buck. And then uh, he wound up dying in December. And we did an autopsy on him and discovered that he had died of bone cancer. Bone, bones were very porous. And so his cycle had gone uh, the full gamut from a, a spike buck as a yearling to a majestic white tail that peaked at age six. Uh, maintained that peak for a couple of years, started to drop off, and then succumbed to old age. And so at age 12, uh, he died. He was actually 12 and a half when he died. 
And as you can see in this photo, you can see his ribs, you can see he doesn't have much mass in his neck and shoulders. He truly was an old man.